Hi everyone, Copstash here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this Taylor's version of Taylor Swift's album 1989. This is a new re-recorded album from one of pop's biggest stars at the moment, that would be Taylor Swift. She has been juggling a lot lately and pretty much pulling all of it off with flawless style and grace. She is continuing to evolve artistically, putting out a pair of indie folk friendly sister albums that are pretty much my favorite project she's released so far. We also had her foray back into pop music with Midnight's, an album that I was not crazy about personally, but she did have a few bona fide hits off of it. It did do numbers. She has also been absolutely killing it on a tour that uh, allegedly has been a boost to the American economy. And finally, she's slowly but surely been re-recording all of her older albums, so there's versions of them floating out there that she owns the masters of. Hence why there is now a Taylor's version of 1989 the most unequivocal pop triumph of her career so far. It's almost 10 years old at this point. You could really argue that she would not be at the point that she is now if not for this record. As the reception of it was so huge, it pretty much eliminated the perception of Swift as a singer-songwriter or a country artist who just dabbled in pop every once in a while. So for a lot of reasons, it's almost more necessary that Taylor nail the recreation of this record as opposed to Red or Speak Now. Once again, she's teamed up with producer Christopher Rowe, who has really been her most consistent collaborator in this Taylor's version series. And given Rowe's background in country music production, he was a pretty sensible pick in flawlessly recreating the mixes and instrumental palettes of Speak Now and Fearless, which in some respects sounded even better than the original versions. Rowe was also surprisingly capable when it came to reverse engineering some of the poppier cuts off Red too, but there are much bigger shoes to fill on 1989, as this record was almost entirely produced by pop production legend Max Martin, as well as his Swedish protege Shellback. Now, it should go without saying, from Britney Spears to 1989, to even The Weeknd's latest project, Dawn FM, uh, Martin is responsible for a lot of modern pop's DNA. His influence really cannot be overstated. And even though 1989 may not be my favorite Taylor Swift project, you can hear a lot of effort and detail went into the production of those tracks. And taking on a recreation of this size on some level uh, must be like trying to uh, reimagine the brush strokes of the Mona Lisa. All right, maybe that comparison's overdoing it, but you get what I'm saying. Because the point is is to have an acceptable replacement for the original version of the album that fans can stream and buy knowing that more of the money is going into Taylor's pocket. Which, when you put it that way, maybe the cause isn't <laughs> that dire. But Despite me being very much in favor of what Taylor is trying to pull off here, I feel like this is the first major misstep in the Taylor's version series, with maybe the most obvious takeaway here being, don't get a country producer to recreate your Swedish engineered uh, magnum synth pop opus. Because while the differences between these records aren't vast, there is something noticeably off about the Taylor's version. I mean, it does sound close enough to the point where your average person blasting these tracks off their smartphone most likely won't be able to uh, see much separation. And maybe that's the only bar Taylor was concerned with reaching at the end of the day. But honestly, overall, the mixes on this thing sound pretty shoddy. There is little to no breathing room between each piece of instrumentation, respectively, to the point where some key grooves get smothered a bit, like with the throbbing synth bass lines on the track style. And sometimes the thick rushes of synths on the choruses are so intense, the instrument just sounds like a wall of mush. And this is especially detrimental to some of the softer cuts on this LP, such as Clean, where the competing layers of synths, bass, and vocals feel more like they are fighting than coalescing. The effect of that being the chorus no longer sounds serene and blissful. Even the finite instrumental differences between the original and Taylor's version make you appreciate how methodical Martin and Shellback were, like on the intro to Shake It Off, where the sustain on the floor tom is too too damn long. It's super bassy and rings out with this ridiculous bwom, bwom, bwom that eats up the space between every beat. And for sure, while you hear those big toms on the original version, the tone of them more crisp, they are dampened a bit more too. Frankly, it just sounds better. So these are details that are clearly getting overlooked. Meanwhile, uh, Swift and Roe seem to be taking extra care to make sure her vocals sound more processed than ever and have an extra dollop of like digital reverb on them, which how is that? 
helping anything. There are a few tracks in the track list that I think mostly nail it in terms of tone and sonic accuracy. Wildest Dreams uh, is an example. But for the most part, I think uh, this redo was kind of a bust. The only thing I can hope for is that given that a, a lot of my issues on this album come down to amendable mixing changes that maybe Swift and Rose sneakily throw in a Taylor's version 2.0 on streaming at some point. Because these days artists replace mixes for songs uh, on streaming platforms all the time. Uh, why not now? The only thing really worth diving into on this record ended up being the Jack Antonoff produced extra tracks and vault tracks. Basically the non-album new material that Taylor has been uh, adding on to the end of these Taylor's versions every time they come out, like the glistening anti-slut shaming anthem Slut, where Taylor goes over a lot of the controversy around her public dating history. It's pretty heavy-handed lyrically, but at least it sounds better than a lot of the core songs on the record. The beat also has a bit more heft to it than many of the cuts off of Midnight's, which I thought, as far as Jack's production goes, uh, sounded a bit washed out. Say Don't Go is one of the more throwback sounding cuts of the vault tracks, really revels in this 80s new wave pop bliss, and is also co-written with veteran pop producer and alchemist Diane Warren. Now That We Don't Talk is also another bit of 80s pastiche. I love the shouty chorus, the dazzling synthesizer sequences. Taylor really came through with a banger on this one. I just think the ending could have used some work, as it slowly gets smothered in these odd modulating drones. Feels like somewhere in the studio, uh, some random art school kid just like started a noise set while Taylor was finishing up her song. No idea what Jack was thinking on that one, or what uh, he was doing mixing Is It Over Now, which is strangely the most deafening and blown out song on the entire record. You can barely hear the beat at some points. Yeah, this is weird. This is odd. I mean, I've been talking about and covering these Taylor's versions, um, all of them up until this point, and, um, you know, for the most part, uh, going back to these records, looking at what has been done, how they compare to the original versions, it, it's pretty much been a layup in, in terms of reviewing coverage, because the two versions are so alike, the vault tracks typically do add so much. But with this version here, unfortunately, we have kind of hit a snag, and have gotten, in my opinion, what I think is a less listenable version of the record, which maybe a lot of hardcore fans will stick to just out of devotion to Taylor, most likely enough to make redoing it all worth it in the end. But to my ears and most likely the ears of anybody who's been listening to this album for years, uh, the original frankly, sounds better and more balanced and more open and just legible, which is why I'm kind of feeling a letdown out of 10 on this new 1989 Taylor's version. Tran, Zition, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Taylor Swift, 1989, uh, forever.